What is your experience like working with multiple teams? Hello, welcome to the Scrum Chat Room with Dr. Francis Simbunya. This is one of the most frequent asked questions in a lot of interviews and they want you to demonstrate your ability of working with multiple teams and how you've been able to collaborate with multiple teams and lead multiple teams to success. What is the best way to handle this question and how is working with multiple teams like and uh, what are some of the possible ways you can answer this question and uh, you're welcome to the scrum chat room with dr francis Simbunya, and we're going to dissect this but before we go ahead uh if you want to be safe certified safe scrum master certified join one of our premium programs four evenings monday tuesday wednesday thursday uh, or evening four four hours from 5 p.m central time so if that fit into your schedule uh, there's a discount link below or simply just send me a text. Uh, you can find my number in the description below below and I'll show you how to enroll on that. There's definitely very limited seat. We keep our class size very small so that to improve our experience of our learning. And for those who need like extra help resources, check also the link below. You will see questions and answer. You will see a lot of tell me about yourself, resume, template, uh, all other materials that can help you. So. If you have any question, simply send us an email and we're going to respond to that. But without wasting much time, let's get into the question and let's look at how, what are the possible ways we can handle this question. Now, what's working with a multiple team like? Um, if you look at many resumes, all right, I'm going to talk about resumes maybe in the, one of my next videos because it's very, very important. And when you can see like, when you can be able to evaluate to see if your resume is like, uh, the major challenge or not i'm going to talk about that in the next video but let's focus right this video is to talk about how to work with multiple teams now let's say you're working with two teams in uh, a scrum environment i'm going to talk about a scrum environment then i'll talk about a safe environment and how working with two teams is like now if you're working with two teams in a scrum environment there are possibility that the team might be working on different product or the team might be working on the same product. Now let's talk about the team working on the same product. I wanna take a practical example. Let's say that you have a team that is working on the, uh, creating booking functionalities for hotels and revelation in a new resort that has just been created, all right? A new resort that has just been found, maybe a new island, and uh, a group of uh, tech guy has been hired to create booking functionality so that people can uh, be able to make reservations, go in, go for vacation in that uh, location, and all of that. Now, one of the simplest way is to leverage on the uh, booking site that has has already existed. But any new resource or any new company would like to own it so that they don't pay so much fees. So that's why you can still work on booking functionality on a new resort area, despite the fact that you still have the capability to go through a third party software and book it. You can, the, the company that is uh, uh, hosting maybe a new resource will want to have something very, very unique. All right. Perfect. Now, if you're working on a Scrum team that is building that side, what can happen is that there might be one thing that is working on, let's say, uh, the management functionality. They want to make sure that uh, um, the management side of it, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean Potter, the, the, the management can be able to see who is booking. They can be able to see, collect all the information and every side of the aspect now they want to be also be able to kind of work on to see how customer can book how it is being received by the management how that feedback op op occur front and back right so that could be a whole team working on that aspect now there can be another team that is working on let's say the uh, security uh, concern because if this is like a, 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 a maybe a heavily visited website, it is prone to a lot of vulnerability, right? So uh, although 
a team, a scrum team we have normally ready in progress, build a story, the sto build a story, a story, the story is uh, in progress, the story go through testing and all of that. There is still really high function, uh, uh, there is still very uh, high chances that there might still be a lot of uh, bugs that is missing. Now you might have a whole DevOps team that is working to make sure that they find inbox to make sure that they are uh, troubleshooting cases to make sure that they are deploring a lot of uh, uh, the software that need to be used you might have a whole team that is dedicated to that now you might have another whole team that's dedicated for support right but then you often have the support team when they we start releasing when we start releasing uh, uh we start releasing and deploying the application for into the user environment then they start using it and then they start sending feedback or oh, this is not working this is not working and then you might have now the the data team or the support team that is working to make sure that everything is being fixed so you can work with a team that is building on the uh, room functionality the release and the manage how people are going to book how they're going to receive there is a booking how the coordination is going to go in place so that team will contain both front-end developers and back-end developers. It's a complete team. All right. Now, you might have now another team who, which is a support team. And that team is kind of more or less trying to look at if all the functionality are working properly, what are some of the bugs that are there, if they are passing all the security uh, tests and all of that, the more focus on the focus. So they interact a lot with the user, right? Now, the first thing which is working on the release functionality and other stuff, they might interact more with the, the stakeholder that's going to be the manager that's giving all the functionality. You might have the second team, which is a support team, when they start going to the client and there's that front and back, there might be a dedicated team that's working to troubleshoot all those functionality. And the second team should be kind of a way more responsive team, right? In such a way that they can easily adapt to issues that are coming in, bugs that need to be fixed and all of that. They should be really kind of that, uh, 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 we, call, we call them data engineering team, right? Really flexible and working on a whole lot of technical stuff there. And now, with all of this team, Team A, working on how it's going to look, how uh, the command is going to say, if a book has going to happen, now that's a, a Scrum team. The second team, that's working on support team, on the client, on the, making sure that every functionality is running well, making sure that uh, maybe when a client actually get into the venue into the venue what are they going to see they're trying to make it more visible trying to make more user experience really really kind of right the two different thing now you might have a team that is all dedicated only in fixing box looking at what are the tickets that are coming in what are the box that are there they're trying to find box you might have a dedicated team so you might just say okay I was working with a team of developers that were building uh, um, an application interface, but the, the, was it a web application? Was it an, um, an Android or was it also uh, Android and iOS? Now, my, my caution here is that if you say you were building a mobile uh, application, or an Android or an iOS application, you need to be a bit kind of caution here because if you say you were building it and the project is completed, we should be able to go to the app store and see the name of the app, right? But then if you say that, okay, uh, it's still an MVP, which is still a minimum viable product and it's not yet fully released, then we expect that, okay, it might also not available for the public but you can also just build an extension of something that is has already been existing for instance uh you might build an extension an interface within a website uh, that is already operating for instance i might have a website as a company and i want now to start uh, renting some of my room now you can go into that and build an interface that's going to rest but that's going to be responsible in booking some of the rooms, 
All right so why in the in the website there might be an interface so those are possible projects that you can work on as a scrum master right you may build an interface and you might uh, develop a mobile app you might build a whole web functionality uh, that can create help create the function all right perfect so um if you look at this different component building the interface or building the functionality which goes on building the code and how the user is going to uh, work on it that's one thing now there be maybe another team that you already release into the environment of the client and the client is sending a lot of questions support and other stuff there might be a dedicated team to work on it if this team is still building more functionality it kind of not really it's a very huge project it would not really be appropriate for the team to still be building the functionality and have handling all the support team is going to disrupt a lot of work right and that's why sometimes in an interview you might have a question what happened if we have a serious bug that happened in the middle of the in the middle of the spring what do you do as a scrum master this question only come in if your team is the one handling support handling all the department and other stuff yeah so you might also have a dedicated DevOps team that is handling tickets from all the different teams and making sure they're deploying all the necessary software and fixing all the issues that are concerned in terms of DevOps. You can also have a DevOps team. All right. So you can also have the app automation team, which means that it's already built, but then uh, we have a dedicated team that want to see how the app can be automated in different environment. How is it going to work in this environment? What are the different aspects? So you can have different aspects of this uh, of the of the side that you're building that has been handled by different teams, especially if this is being released to different clients and not just to one client. So that's like a scenario of you working with different team. Now, if it's in a safe environment. You working with two teams, the same environment simply means it's still kind of the same, but then the difference is that what? There's a lot of alignment in the safe environment. They start the same time, they finish the same time, they look at there's a lot of uh, dependency, they plan what they're going to do co coherently, and they do it like side by side. Yeah. So you might have the same thing in a safe environment, a team working on this functionality, another team working on a different functionality. So, and the team, uh, the team must not really be the same size. They might be different size, right? If you have, let's say, a data engineering team or uh, the, the support team, they might have just about five uh, members, five uh, developers, the scrum master, the product owner. Now, if you have a team that is a kind of uh, a full development team with a uh, uh, front end engineer, full stack engineer, back end engineer, a tester or so, you might have up to about 10, 12, 10 people in the team, depending on what they're really working on. All right. So that gives you an idea of what it means in working, what it means or what it takes to work with multiple teams. Okay. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to see you in the next video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Do not forget to hit the like button. I'm going to see you in the next video.